Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. Tonight, ISIS continues its assault against Christians. And my opening statement on Washington's inability to deal with the increasing threat to America. But first, the annual Conservative Political Action Committee, CPAC, wrapped up earlier today with their traditional straw poll. Here are the results. For the third year in a row, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul takes the prize with Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker finishing a close second. Texas Senator Ted Cruz came in third, followed by Dr. Ben Carson and former Florida Governor Jeb Bush in fifth place. And this week we saw a lot of great speeches at both CPAC and the Club for Growth. Take a look. There comes a time in the history of nations when fear and forgetfulness cause a nation to hesitate, to waver, and perhaps even to succumb. When that time comes, those who love liberty must rise to the occasion. Will you, will you lovers of liberty, will you rise to the occasion? We have a president, a president who draws lines in the sand and fails to act, a president who calls ISIS the JV club. We need a leader in America who stands up and realizes that radical Islamic terrorism is the threat to our way of life and to all freedom-loving people around the world. You're going to hear it directly from me and bluntly uh, because I care. If I didn't care, there's no reason to do this. But sit down and shut up? I mean... Yeah, well, sometimes people need to be told to sit down and shut up. The biggest divide we have in this country, it's not between Republicans and Democrats. The biggest divide we have in this country is between career politicians in Washington and the American people. Oh, the naive Obama State Department. Oh, they say we, we can't kill our way out of war? Really? <laughs> Tell that to the Nazis. Oh, wait, you can't because they're dead. We killed them. Reagan was opposed by a prominent family who seeks to occupy the White House for the third time. The only dynasty I like is the Duck Dynasty. If I run, I will tell you, the king of building buildings, the king of building walls, nobody can build them like Trump. That I can promise you. I believe Hillary Clinton's abdication of responsibility, her refusal to provide an adequate defense for Benghazi, her dereliction of duty should forever preclude her from our office. It's time for Hillary Clinton to permanently retire. Imagine if we had a commander in chief that understood that the way to defeat ISIS is not to find him a job. Imagine if we had a president who doesn't travel the world bad mouthing America. After all, that's the UN's job. The biggest mistake I made throughout this whole process, and I've admitted it over and over again, is I was so eager to fix things, I didn't talk about them, I just came in and fixed them. The president jammed down the throat, Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, and, and Dodd-Frank, and the stimulus, but we have fought in a principal way, increased overreach. He's now using his executive power to try to carry out his agenda. But over time, we have to start being for things again. There are a lot of other conservatives that haven't been asked. They don't know that they're conservative. If we share our enthusiasm and love for our country and belief in our philosophy, we will be able to get Latinos and young people and other people that you need to win to get 50. They are a religious movement that seeks to take the world back to the seventh century. And it is their stated vow to kill as many Americans as possible. We didn't start this war, nor did we choose it, but we will have the will to finish it. With me now, Republican Congresswoman Marsha Blackburn, who spoke at CPAC this week. Good evening, Congresswoman. Good Rand evening. Paul wins the straw poll for the third straight year. Your reaction? I am not surprised at all. He was well received. And that really is a crowd. They love Rand Paul. They love Ted Cruz. They love Marco Rubio, the youth, the energy. And it is a very conservative, libertarian leaning group. It seems like they also loved uh, uh, the, the number two uh, who came in yes. this draw poll. 
Scott, Scott Walker. Walker. They certainly did. And you know, Judge, I think if you were saying who of the governors is kind of leading the way, it is Scott Walker. People appreciate so much the job that he did in Wisconsin, how he took on the unions and how he just got the job done, kept plowing through it. That is going to serve him very well as he goes through this process. Well, you were there this week, Congressman. Who were the speakers that impressed you the most? Well, I tell you, I think Sarah Palin did a great job. It was a serious speech. Carly Fiorina did a great job also. I was pleased to see how well so many of our people did. Donald Trump always ignites a crowd. Uh, Rand Paul just uh, is trying to beef up his foreign policy bona fides, if you will. And so many people focused on that. Everybody did a great job. That's a great thing. There are plenty of options for 2016. The mood is serious. People are focused, and they want to make certain that we win this thing. How big an issue do you think immigration is going to be in the selection of the Republican nominee for president? I think immigration is going to be right there at the top. I think you could put border security, immigration, and actually probably the security agenda all told. National security, retirement security, economic security, job security. You're hearing a lot about that, and immigration is a part of that. Do, so you, many think, do you think, Congresswoman, that that might be the reason that uh, uh, Governor Jeb Bush came in fifth? It, it may have been. I don't know. Uh, I do know this. People want to make certain that we get it right, that we secure the border first, and that we rein in President Obama's executive amnesty. People will say, you know, he doesn't have that authority. That belongs to Congress. So we want to see Congress step back in and fix this process. And what about terrorism? What about national security? I mean, after immigration, national security, Americans are very concerned about that. Which of the candidates do you think spoke you know, strongly about the, the need for a strong strategy from this country. Yeah, and that security component with the terrorists, you heard that repeatedly. And Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, several of them brought that up. You heard Rand Paul's remarks there. And that desire for people to see America again, uh, peace through strength, going out here, defining the problem, defining the war, fighting it, and winning it. And this is where I thought Sarah Palin did a terrific job, as she brought the focus back to the veterans and the problems that are there, and not to forget about that. I, it was a different type speech for her. I thought it was right on the mark. But, but who of the candidates do you believe has the most experience to deal with the issue of terrorism? When you're looking at experience in a foreign policy realm, it's going to be someone who has been at the federal level. I do think that the governors that are there, Governor Walker and others, are going to be able to bring in people that will help them to develop the, the expertise that is necessary and assemble a team. But, but they're not at the federal level. You just said they're that not. They're right. not. And it is people that have been in the House and the Senate that have had that experience of working through those policy issues, dealing with the issues of the U.N., dealing with the issues of foreign policy, and with the DOD. But I think the governors are going to do a great job of bringing people to help them develop the expertise. So much of it is how you make your decisions right. and the matrix that you work from. And I certainly believe that there, you're going to see them develop that and bring forward solutions, which is what people want to hear. All right. Congresswoman Blackburn, thanks so much for being with us this evening. Thank you. All right. And with me now, Republican.